Hi everyone and welcome back to another Lawn Fawn video. This is Mindy Egan and in today's video I am going to be showing you how I created this rainbow reveal wheel. I'm going to start off by die cutting out the reveal wheel base pieces out of some Lawn Fawn white cardstock. Then I'm going to use the Reveal Wheel Circle Sentiments Stamp Set. I'm going to get my stamping out of the way and work on my background later. So I really liked that sentiment that says, wishing you a happy day. I wanted to make some encouragement cards, so this is going to be a really easy way to do that. Now this one, if you look on the stamp set, is labeled B, and so is this template that I'm going to use. This is the Reveal Wheel Circle Sentiments template. So the B's both coordinate and they will line up perfectly. I placed that on top of my white cardstock and held it in place with post-it tape. And I'm going to use my Misty tool to do my stamping. I want to make sure that I have a really nice crisp black image of my sentiments because I will be adding color on top of this. So I inked it up once with the Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink and then I'm going to ink it up again. And I'm gonna put this piece off on the side. I wanna make sure that my ink is really nice and dry. Now I'm also going to bring in this circle. This is going to be my sun. So I'm just using my scrap cardstock here that I die cut my bases from. And I'm gonna ink that up as well with the jet black ink. And I thought these sunglasses were really cute. So you could use the smiley faces, but I decided the sunglasses uh, would fit my background really nice. So I'll stamp that up too. And I do double stamp that since it is kind of a solid image. I want to make sure that that is got good coverage. So once I have those stamped, I'm going to just set them off on the side to dry for a little while. Now I'm going to work on my ink blending for my background. So I'm just using a white piece of cardstock. This is four and a quarter by five and a half. And I'm going to start off by adding some tumbled glass. Now I'm just using uh, my sponge tool to do the ink blending. Whenever I have a big area to cover, I just grab the sponge tool to do the ink blending. You can use whatever you're comfortable with. So I'm adding on that tumble glass. I don't need to go all the way down to the bottom because I will be covering that up. Then next, I'm gonna come in with Salty Ocean and I'll blend that down. So I'll have kind of a, a slow transition with the different colors. What's really nice is because I did lay some color down already, it does make the rest of the inks easier to blend on. So this one is the blueprint sketch that I'm adding to the very top, and then I will go back and forth between the colors to help make that a really nice smooth transition. And then also coming back in with the tumble glass. Then I'll just take some clear water, spritz that onto that background, and dab it up with a paper towel. And that just adds a little bit of interest to my background. Now I'm going to die cut out my reveal wheel uh, front panel here. So I'm using the semicircle reveal wheel insert. So I just placed that in there. I'm gonna hold this all down with some purple tape and run that through my die cut machine. So this is creating our window where our sentiment is going to go. And I like to save those pieces just in case I use them down the road. Now for the scene on my card, I'm taking some mermaid cardstock. I did die cut it with the stitched simple wavy border and I'm adding a little bit of the Peacock Feathers Distress Ink. Now this is totally optional. Um, you don't see a lot of the rest of the cardstock just depending how you layer the front of your card, but I wanted to add it just in case. And then I also have here um, the palm tree border that I had die cut out of a brown shimmer cardstock. I also have this separate piece you can cut. This has got the dotted line at the top. And I'm ink blending that with antique linen and vintage photo distress oxide ink. Once again, kind of going for that two-tone color look. This is going to layer on top of my palm tree borders. So I'm just creating a sandy beach for my scene using a life-changing life -changing blender brush to blend those. And then to add interest to this, I am just using some watercolors. So I spritzed the white and the brown watercolor with some clear water, 
picked it up with my paintbrush and I did bring it to my mat and then dilute it just a little bit more so I could flick that onto my sand and then doing the same thing with the brown and I really like this look this really just adds that interest to the background kind of breaks up that scene a little bit so once those pieces are dry I'm going to start working on the front of my card. So this is the ocean that I'll have in the background. I'm just going to attach that with the tape runner, adding little bits. Now I did decide I wanted it to peek up a little bit further than what I had die cut it at. So you'll see I have just a little bit of white space there at the bottom and that's okay because no one's going to see that anyway. And then I do have here the palm tree border that was die cut out of that shimmer card stock. And I also die cut out the palm tree tops out of the green shimmer cardstock. So this shimmer cardstock is just really pretty in person. Adds that little bit of something to your card front. And then once I have all of those palm trees attached with the liquid glue, I'm going to just trim off any that are overhanging. Now I can work on creating my rainbow reveal wheel. So I'm going to do this with Copic markers. There are many different ways that you could do it, but I really liked having that strip of a rainbow through my window. So I'm starting, you'll notice now on that reveal wheel, there are the embossed lines. I am coloring just inside of that. So right above the sentiments, you can always bring it back to your window and double check where it lines up, but I'm coloring it just inside of that embossed line. So I'm starting off with my red. This is actually R24. And then bringing in the orange, so going in rainbow order, I have YR04. I believe I used Y06. And then YG06 for the green, B02 for blue, and V04. And I'm totally freehanding this. It doesn't need to be perfect. It just looks really pretty through the rainbow and you'll most likely lose that purple a little bit, but that's okay. So you can see I have that lined up. You can always come back in and fill in if you need to add a little bit more red to the areas. So while I have my markers out, I am coloring in my sun. I'm using Y04, Y06, and Y08. And then I'm going to use the coordinating die to die cut that out. Now to assemble my reveal wheel, I'm taking that larger base that I have my rainbow on and that smaller base circle, popping a brad through the back up to the front and then opening up that brad. I don't need to worry about doing anything else to this because everything is stamped and colored. So then I placed three foam squares on that smaller circle making sure that those foam squares do not touch the brad. And then I can line up my window, making sure my embossed lines do not show. Once I'm happy with the placement of where my rainbow is going to be, I'm going to just place that down onto a white piece of cardstock that I had die cut from the reveal wheel panel. And then just push that down. So the only thing connecting this right now is those foam squares with our reveal wheel base. So you can see how our rainbow moves in there. I thought that was just really super, super cool how that looks. Granted, I'm turning it the wrong direction at this very moment, but you get the idea. So there is how our reveal wheel is going to turn to wishing you a happy day. So I'm adding the larger foam squares onto the base, making sure that they do not touch my wheel. And then I can add my front panel on top of that, just making sure all of my corners match up. So I have this great rainbow going on in the background. Now my little sun there, I did decide to add some foam squares to that. That's gonna go right in the middle. You just wanna make sure that your foam squares don't go up any higher than that little area that's kind of designated for it. Otherwise your wheel won't turn. So I just have that in there with my sun with the cool sunglasses. And then for a little bit more dimension, I decided to add foam squares to my sandy beach. That's totally optional. And then once I remove the backing of the foam squares for that, I'm gonna add that right on top. So I love the look of that shimmery cardstock for the trunk of my trees, and then I have the sandy beach there. Now I need to add my little indicator there to make sure to let the recipient know what direction to turn and that this is an interactive card. So I kind of just lined up where that would go 
just kind of quickly move my panel off on the side and then I can just stamp that down with the black ink. I'm going to finish the assembly of my card just by adding tape runner to the back of this, adding that front panel to my white cardstock, and then I'll be attaching that to a card base I created out of mermaid cardstock. Now you'll notice I don't have any critters or any other um, images on here except for that sun. And you totally can do that. This would be a great beach scene to create. The reason I didn't do it is that this is something that I could mass create if I wanted to. I think um, interactive cards are such a fun surprise to give to people and I'm really focusing on making encouragement cards right now. So you could grab your die cutting machine and some paper and just sit in front of your TV or on the floor and just die cut away to create these fun interactive cards. I hope you'll give this a try and gives you some fun ideas to create the encouragement cards. Thank you so much for joining me today and have an amazing day.